Talk to me about how you see your industry right now, the health of it. Yes, Ed, thanks for having me. Esports is at a really interesting intersection right now, as we've always been a digital product that bridges and straddles sports and entertainment. But now with more eyes on advanced technologies like AI and sports analytics and all the derivatives of such, we're really seeing the professionalization as well as the awareness of esports as a product at a rate that hasn't been seen before. So the growth and headwinds that we're experiencing, especially post-pandemic, where games Gaming and esports events and live events in person are becoming more and more commonplace. It's an exciting time to be part of the community. It's also interesting to talk about the content side of this story. And when you think about Evil Geniuses, you guys, you think about YouTube or Twitch, a lot of what you're doing is going out there for free. So how are you going to make some money and, and, and take that free content and turn it into merchandising or, or other ways of, of building revenue streams? Yes, this is the existential rub of esports organizations like yes. ourselves, <laughs> where we are content machines, billions of minutes a year of produced content, whether it's in-game athletics uh, competition moments to behind the scenes social engagement. And we know we have the eyes and hearts of especially Gen Z and Gen Alpha audiences. EG on its own can eclipse over 20 million views on our um, third party platforms itself. But how we find and face the media rights ownership and distribution that is not as professionalized as you see in traditional sports, bridging with that entertainment of, okay, there's YouTube and Twitch. What's interesting right now is that we're seeing that traditional linear media, whether it's movies and cinemas, in-person events, these moments where other people who are hungry for content for that audience are looking and creating in, um, new ways to bring in that gaming community, which has trickle-down effects on revenue. A very public example that just went out, right, XQC, a big gaming streamer, signing with Kick, a Twitch competitor, for a $100 million two-year deal. That's bigger than many traditional sports athletes' um, rights to a team. And so if you continue to look at how brands are aware that the gaming content and community is valuable and their purchasing power is increasing, we're hoping the competition and thus the media rights values will continue to increase as time goes on. We're just showing some interesting data about your user base, your audience. 64% aged 18 to 34. So take that demographic. Who are you competing with? Other players in the space or other forms of content? Like, are you also competing directly with Twitch, as an example? I wouldn't say we're direct competitors of a Twitch or a YouTube because we leverage those platforms to engage and reach in our community. Esports organizations in particular, we're more of the platform. Think of us, if you're very unfamiliar, as the actual athletic team that creates the comp competitive moments. But the hub and spoke model of our community, including media distribution like Twitch, helps us. But we do have to still diversify and figure out how we stand apart from not only our other competitors in the space of how is our content and thus our audience differentiated, but then we also compete against traditional sports and media, um, traditional pop culture, music and fashion. Gen Z has spoken and gaming is a staple of their culture and continuing to create that evergreen understood moment for brand and capital allocators that that is also true um, is important for us. Uh, Nicole, how difficult is your day job right now? Think about the news in April about the roster changes. I think you guys have done a few rounds of layoffs this year as well. How's running that business? Yes. What esports con continuing from the sports monetization model, tra tra uh, transforming into more of that entertainment. We, just like many other businesses in tech and advertising, the macroeconomic climate earlier this year was hard, as traditional sponsorship sales is much of our current revenue stream. It required us to be really judicious and pivot on our feet quickly around what is valuable inventory, what is the valuable market rate of talent, and much of what we had to do was course correct to the macroeconomic market. Um, the good news is, though, with these, um, with these adjustments and reductions, we've also been able to find really good headwinds and really double down on what makes our brand differentiated and strong in this space. Um, as you shared with the stats earlier, EG is a leader in gaming around inclusion with women, with the LGBTQ community, with the BIPOC community. And those values and affinities, despite the macroeconomic sponsorship challenges, still resonate with advertisers and brands to engage with the Gen Z community through our platform and what we have. So I'm grateful to an yes. amazing team behind me to help 
help us stay robust and continue through um, many technology and economic changes. Nicole, quickly, what is the one thing to your mind that's going to put some energy back into esports? That's going to put sorry. Some energy, some momentum back into this industry. Back into the industry. I would say there's so much energy in esports right now. When you look at TikTok, where 40 billion views of gaming-related content month over month consistently, in-person arenas selling out for events. Last year, League of Legends had a North American road show culminating in Chase Center in San Francisco selling out. I think what will continue to drive energy is more multi-generational audiences being aware of this is the power of gaming, and gaming is here to stay.